Hello everyone. In this video, let's make a sci-fi box or a crate of some sort. So to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a box and just drag it right on the surface of my grid. I would like this box to be zeroed out. So I'm going to go to my channel box, and just select uh, all three of these, press zero and press enter. And now my box is going to be uh, centered, right? Now, if you wanted to follow along, my uh, grid is set to, by default, 12 by five units. So maybe you wanna follow uh, me along so you have the same measurements. As far as the depth of the cube, I'm setting this to 10. And that is my measurements. So you can do the same on your end. So this is gonna be kind of the outside uh, uh, shell of our box, right? So my intention is to obviously just build maybe one side of this um, and then just simply mirror it to all the other sides, right? So let's just only focus on one. So one out of six, right? So um, to get started, one of the things I would like to uh, tackle right away is that I don't want these sharp edges on my cube uh, or on my box. So I'm going to select, uh, you know what, let's just select the entire box and let's just do a bevel and let's change our fraction to something like, uh, we could do 0.1 and let's just add um, a few segments in between. I'm going to do five. So then the box is going to be uh, something like this as far as like the uh, the shape goes all right now let's go ahead and add more uh, details to this box okay so the first thing i need to do is i'm gonna um, grab another box and also drag it right on my grid and my i do have my if i go to uh, create polygon primitives i have my inter interactive creation on so that's checked that's why i'm dragging my shapes um, on my uh, grid so i'm gonna position this again I'm gonna zero this out uh, but not on Y I only just want let's see I only want uh, zeroed out on Z and X right and then as far as this goes I'm gonna leave it at something like 2.5 uh, all right and uh, as far as the scale goes let's leave it Maybe let's make it just a little bit smaller so we can maybe do some more detail around this uh, centerpiece. So I'm going to go, let's just go to six. That's fine. Okay. Really nice. All right. Next, I'm going to click on my box and I'm going to isolate it. I'm going to go to edges and I'm just going to grab all of these edges here and I'm going to do a uh, bevel. So then I'm left with something like this. Let's just leave it on 0.5, that's fine. Um, another thing we can do is, um, we don't need this face here, I'm gonna delete it. And uh, if we wanted to, we can also press W and move this up, right? Because that's not gonna be seen, that's gonna be inside the box. Let's jump out of the isolate mode and take a look. So now we have something along these lines. And uh, now I'm looking at it, I would like this to be a little bit larger. So I'm just gonna make this maybe scale of uh let's do scale of one okay very nice and uh let's see let's keep going so the next thing i would like to do is i want to add kind of a tube that is running outside of this uh shape and uh i would like the tube to be kind of the same following the same edge um, as the centerpiece so to do this, um, what I need to do is I'm going to select the, these edges. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. You can hold on the shift key and go all the way around like this. That's one way of selecting all the edges. Another way you could do it is you could uh, right click and just select this face only. And then if you go to uh, select, you can do convert selection and just convert uh, your selection to, uh, to edges, right? Just like that. So that's another uh, a cool little trick. All right, so now what I'd like to do is I would like to take this these edges and turn them into a curve. Um, to turn them into a curve, I'm gonna need to go to uh, Modify, 
convert and I need to click on something called polygon edges to curve. I'm going to go ahead and do that. As soon as I press it, you can see a curve was uh, created, right? If I grab my um, scale tool, I can center my pivot and then I can drag this out to maybe, let's go to like 2.8, uh, 2 1. Uh, yeah, 1.28 on all three. So you have something that looks like this. Very nice. Uh, I can press W and I can change the Y position of this, but I'm just gonna leave it. It doesn't really matter at this point. I'm gonna leave it here. And the next thing I would like to do is I'm gonna click on this uh, button, Sweep Mesh, inside the poly modeling. So when I press Sweep Mesh, it's gonna give me it's going to put a tube around my curve. So now I can change the profile scale of my tube. So maybe something along these lines. I can also uh, change the precision or the resolution of my tube. So if I wanted more resolution, maybe uh, let's do something like this. I'm going to go to uh, 86.74 and that gives me more resolution to play with, right? Another thing I can do is let's go ahead and select our tube and let's just select, I'm going to turn on my symmetry, on my X symmetry, and I'm just going to select all of these pieces here and let's do the same thing uh, here as well. So three on each side and I'm going to press control E and just push these in. So these could be kind of like uh, maybe almost like tubes that are running inside uh, like a thicker part of the cable, right? So I think that's uh, pretty cool. If we wanted to, we can also add some more, let's some, add some more detail on each side here. So holding on the shift key, I'm clicking, double clicking, clicking, double clicking, holding on the shift the entire time. You can see I selected um, all of these guys here. I'm gonna press uh, extrude and let's just pull these out. All right, and now we have something uh, like this. Very nice. Go to object mode, take a look. Um, I'm gonna grab this, press uh, W and I can reset my pivot and I can just push these in so, so it feels like half of it um, is inside the uh, crate, right? You can see I'm looking at this line here. And if we wanted to, we could technically delete anything that is below this line. So maybe let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna push it down so it's below the line. Then I'm gonna press spacebar and go into uh, either the side view or the front view, either or, it doesn't really matter. But let's zoom in and let's go ahead and isolate this. I'm gonna right click, go to face mode, and I'm just gonna select all of these uh, guys here and just press delete. Object mode, press spacebar to jump back into the perspective view. And now if you click on your uh, x-ray button, you can see that we don't have all that geometry that's not being seen, right? So that's gonna be uh, useless, especially if this is a game asset. Very nice. Let's save our work, do control S. All right, really nice. Uh, I'm gonna select the entire thing and I'm gonna uh, clear my history. This way my uh, curve is not gonna be uh, connected to my shape, right? Um, so I'm gonna clear my history and I can even, uh, let's, let's, let's leave the curve just in case, in case we wanna uh, sweep mesh anything else. All right, so now if I select our uh, eight sides or octagon, right? I can, uh, let's uh, make sure that our edges are still selected and let's just do a bevel. And I'm gonna change the, so we can figure out what we want here, but uh, 0.1 seems a little too small. And let me just see uh, what happens if I switch this to 0.15, for example. Yeah, I like this a little better. I think that's a little more interesting. Let's go with this. And uh, next thing I would like to do is I would like to add some kind of a circular um, piece inside, but it would be, uh, in my opinion, it would be nice if this was inset a little bit. So I'm gonna select this face here. 
I'm gonna do control E and I'm just gonna pull these in all right do another control E and let's just push this down and now this will allow us to maybe build something interesting inside so we can figure out how low we want to go and uh, another thing we can do is let's grab these edges here let's do another bevel and I'm gonna go with 0.3 I think that's nice Very cool. Uh, next, let's go ahead and add something uh, inside of our octagon. So to do this, uh, there's a couple different things I could do. I could uh, add a uh, cylinder that's kind of round, or I can kind of maintain this octagon feel. And let's just see, let's just experiment and see what this feels like. If I grab this and center my pivot, right? Um, I could do Control uh, D, grab my scale tool, and not I'm not centering I'm not touching the center I'm just gonna grab this uh, green one on the on the um, Z or is it XZ right and I'm just gonna scale this in and create almost like a little indentation inside I think that's cool so it's gonna be kind of like a centerpiece and then maybe we can put something cylindrical inside Another thing we could do is just change the shape of it so it doesn't match this precisely. I'm gonna grab uh, this edge here. Or let's just grab this uh, face here. Grab scale and let's just pull this in so it's a little more uh, unique, right? Uh, and uh, we can do the same thing with these outside. Let's do something with this as well. I'm gonna select this, isolate it. And what I'm like to do, I'm gonna grab this uh, bottom edge here. Um, I could move this up, it's a little bit too deep. Jump out of isolate and let's just see where that is. So it's right about here. Now, if I um, press R, I can scale this out. And this way, maybe it creates just a little bit of a slope, right? Not too much, but just, just a little bit. Just a little more interesting. Um, I think that's cool. Another thing we could do is let's just do like a little inset uh, here going all the way around. So I'm going to click on this edge, double click on it. I'm going to do a bevel. Let's just make this really, really small. Uh, something like 0.1. Let's add another segment inside. And now um, if I grab this edge here and do um, R, I could jump out of the um, symmetry if I wanted to. If you wanna make sure that your scale is indeed in the center, you can just pull these in like that. And that's uh, gonna create like an interesting indentation in there, right? Just a little uh, extra detail. Let's take a look. Uh, let's turn on our uh, screen ambient occlusion so it's going to give us a little bit shading so we can see uh, what we're doing maybe even better. Let's do Control S to save it. Um, you're welcome if you have a super fast computer you can also turn on anti-alias and that's going to get rid of, uh, it's going to give you a nice preview. In the viewport, uh, my machine is not that fast, so I, I should not have that on. This button here could slow down your machine as well, so be uh, mindful about that. But it does look uh, really nice to see the preview with all the kind of ambient occlusion shadows. All right, let's just keep adding more and more detail. Uh, another thing we could do is we could uh, select all of these edges here. And let's just select these outside ones as well. I'm just gonna go all the way around and select all the um, edges that are super sharp. Something like that. And let's do a um, bevel. And maybe let's just make it um, 0.3. All right, next I'm gonna select uh, this uh, shape here. I'm gonna go to mesh display. And let's go to soft hard edges. And if I reset this, it's currently set to 30 degrees. Um, let's go ahead and change this to, let's change this to uh, 65 and just do apply. And uh, if you do 65 degree angle and then press apply, 
you can see uh, if I get rid of this uh, wireframe, you can see that the sharp edges are kind of staying sharp, but all the surround uh, pieces are now smoothed out, right? And that's um, what I'm going for. I think that's cool. If you wanted these, you know, if you want certain edges to be super sharp, but they're not on your end, uh, make sure you can, you know, force that, right? By just selecting it and going to mesh display and just do something like hard edges. And that will make sure that these are perfectly straight. So you have some uh, option and that's going to actually carry out um, when you export this out to something like Substance Painter or a game engine like Unreal or Unity, uh, these edges are going to maintain their soft edge or hard edge to retain its shape. So that's so, uh, very important to understand how to control your uh, edges to, even before you apply the texture, you want to make sure that your shape um, um, reads well, right? All right, really nice. So I'm going to turn on my uh, wireframe back on and let's just keep going. One of the things I would like to do, is I'm going to click on this poly curve and I'm going to press H on my keyboard. I don't want to delete it yet, just in case we might use it for something else. Maybe do another tube that is um, in the octagon shape, but I do want to hide it. And uh, the only other thing I'm noticing is if I click on this and hide my wireframe, um, I can see that because this was a sweep mesh from a uh, curve, you can see where it was meeting. So it was meeting uh, when it swept, um, you know, along the curve. Uh, this is where um, it met, right? Which means if I isolate this and go into my verts um, it, and then just select one point here, you can see when I select it, I can see in my heads up display that there's two verts, right? Which means uh, the, this is, these are not welded. Let's weld these. How do we uh, weld this? And uh, if you want to know for sure, um, you could just click on your point and then grab, uh, press W on your keyboard. And you can see if you pull this out, you can see that they're not uh, welded together, right? So to fix this, uh, it's very easy. You just select all of your points, right? Make sure that every one of them is selected. And then if you go to edit mesh, we could do a uh, merge, right? And if you click on your options, you can see what that uh, is set to. Let's reset it to make sure that we have the same. And currently, if I uh, select all of my points here, I can see that there's 10 of them. Um, but if I say apply, right? Now they are uh, merged together or welded together. And now I can see there's only five which also means if I go back uh, into object mode and do that trick again, where I go to soft and hard edge and set it to 65 and do apply, uh, you can see that now this uh, line is gonna be uh, matching all the other ones, right? Because these points are now welded. So um, super important, make sure you take the time to weld your uh, sweep mesh when that happens. Let's go ahead and jump out of isolate and take a look. Uh, beautiful, very nice. Uh, let's just keep adding more and more detail, right? So the next thing we could do is um, let's add something to maybe this piece here. So I'm gonna go to isolate and this is what I currently have. So obviously this is not uh, going to work as far as the, um, we wanna make sure that all our geometry is, is in quads or tries, quads preferably, right? To turn this into quads, how do I turn this octagon right here? into quads, right? So to do this, the easiest uh, thing would be is just to grab the cut tool and just simply make a cut from one side to the other, press enter. And let's do the same thing on this side. And now you can see that uh, we have uh, created three different quads and that's much uh, better uh, geometry, right? If I turn on my wireframe, you can see what that looks like, especially if you're creating a professional uh, asset that may be you know, you want to set for a sale or you're working for a studio, make sure that your geometry and topology look uh, beautiful and clean, right? All right, so uh, to, um, to add some more detail to this piece here, what I'd like to do is I'm going to select this bottom piece here and let's go to, um, so let's uh, select uh, this bottom piece, go to edit mesh and let's do a detach. Now, when you do detach, uh, it seemed like nothing happened, but you do need to do a two-step process. You also want to go to mesh and do a separate. So you detach and separate. And now uh, what that means 
is if I center my pivot, you can see that this piece is completely detached and disconnected from the other ones. And the cool thing about this is that now uh, this will allow, allow us to create additional detail to this. So if I click here, hold on the shift key, double click. Let's just go ahead and do this to all four sides. Okay, and now uh, let's do an extrude. And let's just pull this out, something like that. And of course we can pull it in if we wanted to. I'm gonna go uh, pull it out. When I'm pulling it out, I'm, I'm looking here. And uh, you just really wanna make sure that your geometry is not intersecting with itself uh, too much. So some cleanup you know, might be uh, necessary. So let's maybe grab all of these, ed, uh, all these faces here. And you can see how there's a there's like an ugly interception uh, that's happening. I'm gonna press W. And I'm just gonna simply move these up. So something along these lines I think works. Very cool. Let's go to object mode and take a look. So now we have something like this, which is really interesting. Let's jump out of isolate and see how it's looking. Next, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select these four faces here. Let's do another extrusion and let's just pull these in. Do another one and maybe let's pull them in just like that. I think that's uh, adds nice detail to these. Um, let's see, what else can we do? Let's grab this middle piece and I'm gonna press, um, let's center our pivot on this, make sure it's centered. And let's just pull this out and see um, something like this. So that's good. Now, if I go into a face mode and grab this, I can do another extrude and let's pull this out and maybe push it up. Let's do one more time. Do something like this, push this in. All right, so there's some kind of a, almost like a vault, right? You got you got your um, kind of a center going on there. Uh, if you wanted to, we can also maybe grab, let's grab all of these guys and just add some more detail inside there, right? I'm gonna do another extrude and I'm gonna click on this button called keep faces together. I'm gonna say off. And now I can just pull these in like this. And I can do another extrude and let's just push them in. Very nice. All right, let's take a look. I think that's great. Uh, let's see. It feels like uh, we need something in the center as well. Let's do, uh, let's just keep extruding more and more detail. Next, I'm gonna grab this guy here and go to faces and holding on the shift key, I'm gonna select kind of the middle ring on all four sides. Uh, just like that and uh, now what I could do is let's click on let's click on this button here called duplicate uh, as soon as you do if you look in your outliner you can see that uh, additional four shapes have been added and uh, now I can select my two or I can select each shape individually so I'm going to select all four of these that I just extruded let's select all four of them and let's change the pivot to be in the center and let's just scale this in. And I'm gonna scale this in uh, to be connected to almost inside this piece here. You can see that it's about about halfway, right? Next, uh, what we could do is we could combine them into one. So let's press this button here and let's clear our history. If I grab my um, move tool, uh, you can see what that should look like. You have look something like this, right? Um, next, I'm going to press extrude, and I would like to give these guys a little thickness. So I'm just going to give it 
so it almost looks like a uh, almost like a panel right and it's up to you if you want to make these uh, smooth or if you want to keep them kind of sharp if you want to smooth them out um, we could just select all of these edges hold on the shift key and double clicking we could go around and select all of these edges and then what we could do is um, we could do a bevel and you can see how uh, very quickly you can add more uh, segments right to kind of smooth this out so I think in my case uh, I do like them a little smooth and I also like this uh, look that it's creating where it's kind of um, it's almost a little bit it has a little square in it right um, I think that's really interesting very nice let's just select um, all four of these and let's do another extrude pull them in and do one more all right really cool now keep in mind uh, when you uh, if you decide to turn this into a game asset for example and you do uh, UVs right and then bring it into substance painter um, you can uh, stamp a lot more additional detail to uh, to the texture so instead of creating the geometry from the actual uh, geo you can act, you can just use the normal map to create tons of extra details so that's an option as well okay um, to me it feels like uh, these right here could be a little more interesting let's add a little more shape to these so I'm gonna select all of this here let's just scale them in and I think that uh, is looking much better I'm gonna do another extrude and just pull them out okay so it's, it's almost like a little connection piece all right, let's keep going. Uh, I'm gonna grab this guy here and I'm just gonna uh, select each side, all four of these sides. And I'm gonna do an extrude. Do something like that. And then what I would like to do is just, I would like to just push this in, push it out. And um, once you push it out, you can also uh, switch to uh, transformation um, here right and you have the axis orientation set to global so then we can just uh, you know push it down and we can even go all the way inside the thing or we can give it a little uh, a little edge there and I think uh, that adds even more uh, mass to this uh, center piece right so essentially just I'm taking a look I'm trying to see if I have any large empty spaces right so one of the spaces that I'm seeing is maybe in between these pieces here. So if we wanted to, uh, let's just grab maybe, let's grab um, all of this. Just like that. Let's do another extrude. And I'm just gonna extrude this up. Okay. And then again, I'm gonna switch it to my um, world transformation and maybe just pull them down. And we can just uh, go between scaling and pulling it around to see what actually makes sense. And you can see it's doing it symmetrically, which is really cool because it's creating kind of a custom uh, shape that maybe sometimes could even be called accidental, right? It's just kind of, I wasn't planning on it, but I really, I'm really liking this result. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go to object mode and take a look. I think that looks really nice. All right. Another thing I wanted to say is that um, a lot of the stuff that we're doing right now is kind of uh, pooling and extruding from existing shapes. But keep in mind, it's just as easy to create more complexity by introducing uh, other shapes that are not extruded or pulled out from existing geometry. So. Uh, for example, I'm just gonna grab my uh, cylinder and drag my cylinder right there. I'm gonna go to uh, My attribute editor and let's just crank this up. So it's a little bit smoother to maybe like 26 
and uh, let's change our caps once again and again I'm gonna get rid of the uh, the bottom right I don't need that and now I would like to put this into a uh, position so maybe let's make this just a little bit smaller and I'm gonna bring this up so I know it's kind of in the surface and I'm gonna press spacebar and jump into my top view and let's maybe position them in kind of a key places so let's turn on our uh, wireframe um, holding down the V key we can grab this and snap it maybe let's snap one in the corner here and just maybe scale it down and uh, you know before I duplicate it let me just make sure I like how it feels or if I like its position uh, I kind of don't I actually would like this to be more somewhere around here so let me rework this make sure it's even so maybe kind of an even space between uh, these three gaps right uh, I think that's good uh, again before I flip it over let's just do something uh, to it so maybe let's scale this down and let's do a bevel I mean uh, extrude and I need to jump into my perspective view and just maybe pull this down so maybe these could be almost like the four uh, corners that are being held in place I'm gonna do an, uh, let's do another bevel here and if we wanted to we could uh, figure out how thick we want this to be so maybe something along these lines looks nice and you can see right away it, it just adds more balance right so you have the round element with the square element and just feels a little bit better so uh, now what we could do is let's just click on this button here to mirror our geometry and you can see it flipped it over on the X axis right which is great which also means um, if we press it again and switch our X axis to uh, Z we can see that uh, it's also putting it in the other two corners and now we have four four of these guys which is great let's just maybe add uh, you know just one more I'm gonna grab uh, let's grab like our uh, torus here and let's just do something something like this and in the uh, attribute editor let's just dial this down so it looks a little more uh, I, I do want to keep it round but I want to get rid of the height so maybe I have uh, kind of a flat right I have a kind of a flat top and I do I like this round shape that's what I'm kind of shooting for and again I don't need uh, any of these guys here so I'm gonna press delete go to object mode and let's just make this just a little bit smaller and just see uh, if we can find a good place for it so um, I'm gonna press F to frame my shape and maybe uh, I would like to place one on these four sides because these kind of feel uh, large and open to center this I'm gonna jump into my top view and if we wanted to we could turn on our uh, x-ray holding down the X key we can snap it right um, to this grid here and then what we could do is we can just move it to make sure that um, it's about the same gap on both ends and then just like before uh, let's just duplicate it and mirror it right so I'm gonna click on uh, this button here to flip it on X and uh, now if I grab my rotation and change the pivot I can press Control D holding down the J key I can just rotate these uh, 90 degrees and just snap them into position right let's jump out of our x-ray and go back into the perspective view and now we have kind of these four uh, rings so let's uh, select them all merge them together change our pivot grab our transformation tool and let's just bring them down so we can figure out like what what we want out of these I honestly kind of almost like them to be something along these lines I think that's really um, really nice it's not too too detailed 
you know, if you wanted to, you could raise them up and do something like that. But uh, I think I almost like it uh, even more simple. So that means I can isolate them, right? And now I know I don't need any of those bottom faces either. So let's go back into uh, this front view and do isolation one more time. Grab all of these faces here and I'm just going to delete them. Personally, uh, I don't want them. So I'm going to jump back into perspective view, jump out of the isolate and take a look. All right, now we have something like this. Now the really interesting part about all of this uh, complexity, one side of our box so far is 1800 faces, 1870. But keep in mind, we are gonna put them, we're gonna put all these um, on all other sides, right? So maybe uh, this is a good place to kind of stop. And uh, if again, if we wanted to, we can add more uh, detail using the normal map and stamping and substance painter. But for now, I'm gonna stop. So I'm gonna do, um, Let's, uh, let's just clean this up, right? So I'm gonna select all of this. And uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna combine everything into one and clear my history. And uh, now I see that I have this extra group. I don't need it, I'm gonna press delete. I didn't end up using this curve, so I'm gonna delete that as well. So now I'm just lit, uh, left just with this uh, one box, right? And uh, the next uh, challenge is how do we copy this over to all the other sides and let's jump out of the AO as well first obviously um, let's go ahead and disconnect this again so I'm going to select my cube go to mesh and do a separate and now you can see that I just have the cube and then I have uh, kind of this whole top part right and if I wanted to um, I could call it something like top and maybe I could call this uh, box uh, box okay so let's call this box I'm gonna select my uh, top and uh, let's see if I press my transformation tool I can see that it is currently right in the center of the box and that's exactly uh, what I want right for reason for that if that's not the case for you uh, make sure you press the D key and let's go ahead and jump into X if you hold on the D key um, you can see that it's going to show you the pivot. If you hold on the X key, it's going to allow you to snap the pivot of the top of the box wherever you want. Make sure it's in the center, in the very center of the grid uh, from the side view. Okay. And the cool thing about this now, if we go into object mode and grab our rotation, we can press Control D to duplicate this. And then just as before, hold on the J key. You can, you can see when I'm pressing J, it's doing a step snap by five degrees and that's fine. I can just rotate this um, holding, again, holding down the J key all the way around to each side. So I'm gonna repeat this process, Control D, hold out the J key and just rotate this on each side and just keep repeating. Okay, very nice. Let's go into our perspective view and take a look. And now you can see that all of this uh, awesomeness is on all four sides. Now we just have to add it to two more sides, right? So to do that, um, it doesn't really matter what viewport you're in because you're snapping, so uh, you know it's gonna be perfect. So let's do Control uh, D one more time, hold on the J key, and just in this view, I can, swip, um, I can snap it 90 degrees. And the bottom left, you can see it tells you what uh, degrees are, right? And let's, doesn't really matter where, which one I grab. I'm gonna grab this one, press Control D, holding down the J key. I can snap it um, 90 degrees once again. And now, uh, here we are. So now we have something pretty awesome and in, in, in looking, uh, you know, incredibly sophisticated and complex, but yet we only did it on one side, right? So it's, um, I think it's, it's, um, it's looking really nice. And the total poly count for this is just a little bit over 10,000 faces. So it's still super low poly. Uh, let's turn on our ambient occlusion so we can take a look. And of course, uh, the next logical step is going to be combining all of this into one. 
let's grab all of this and combine it and clear our history and let's call this you know our sci-fi box if i go into the side view i can see where the grid floor is and now i can just move this up to put it right on the floor right in all these views pretty amazing so um at this point there's a few things you can do you can uh create your uvs if you did create uvs i suggest you just do it for one side and then to just um you know then clone it to the uh to the other so essentially what you want to do is get rid of all the sides we just did and only leave one then do all of your uvs do a perfect layout then come back into this and copy them over again clone them all to different sides and that's going to overlap all of your uvs perfectly just using one side right and uh, for all six and that's going to be uh, pretty much the perfect approach to the textures for this in my opinion all right so i hope you enjoyed this video i'll just uh, simply throw some um, arnold materials on this for a quick uh, test uh, render all right so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you had fun um, building this and i'll see you in the next one